In this video, I'm going to be taking you inside my head and showing you why I do what I do in a live online head-to-head -head regs matchup. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping you become the best Madden player that you could possibly become. And so if you want to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom right corner of your screen. It's completely free to subscribe, and it just allows you to stay up to date with whenever we release new videos, which we release new videos every single day on the offensive side of the ball to help you become a and, and the defensive side of the ball to help you become the best Madden player that you can be. All right, guys, so starting out on defense, and I love this. My default setting in my in my settings is I like to always try to kick the ball off if I win the toss. So if I win the toss, um, pretty much every single time, I am going to be wanting to kick the ball off. It's such a big advantage to get the ball at the beginning of the second half, in my personal opinion. And so it's just great that we're able to do that. Now, starting out, I'm starting with my nickel 335 wide defense. If you want to get my uh, entire 335 wide defensive guide, you can get that in the description. The full guide is just $15. It's the best defense in the entire game. We go over how to uh, basically do everything that you need to do defensively. So how you play match coverage, how you play zone coverage, how you play man-to-man uh, -man coverage, how you play run defense, how you blitz how you uh, make everything look the same and kind of build a cohesive systematic way for you to be able to play defense in this game and so if you want to get that entire uh guide it is again it is available in the description you can get it for just 15 bucks all right guys so starting out this game um, I'm actually going to be starting out just kind of seeing what my opponent does. Um, my base defense, the defense that I want to stay in as long as humanly possible, is I absolutely love uh, this little three um this this little uh quarters style of coverage this is my defense that i want to be able to stay in as much as possible especially if he's going to pass the ball now if he starts running the ball as he was able to run the ball early on me uh, for a couple plays then i'm going to have to at least you know take note of that i might have to shift some stuff around and might have to change how i'm doing some stuff in order to you know kind of help with the run defense now here's going to i think gun bunch open offset so i want to say he's in the jets playbook there we almost get an interception on that little bubble screen that's going to bring up a fourth down and seven and we're looking fairly decent to start out now one of the other things that i've actually been doing a little bit recently is i've actually been using uh the big nickel over g a little bit down in the red zone um also the nickel normal is a really good red zone defense those are all uh those are similar in how they how they play they're not exactly the same they are certainly similar a little bit um, but as you see right here we're just going to kind of set up a little run defense let's see what he's going to do here going to go to wide trail uh, we're going to let that go right into my linebacker and the defense is able to hold now on the offensive side of the ball we're actually in a very good position now i'm running the new york jets offensive playbook um, in my personal opinion the new york jets offensive guide is the best offense in the entire game uh in the guide i cover the bunch the bunch tight end as well as um as well as the trips tight end offset, which the trips tight end offset is a very, very underrated little formation, um, and it's just super, super effective. So anyways, we're gonna start out with that. If you wanna get the bunch offensive guide, you can get the entire offense in the description. Um, it breaks down everything that you need to know exactly how I run this offense. Um, and really what we've been doing lately is we've been returning to simplicity. We've been simplifying what we do in order to maximize our results. And so we've been trying to keep it super, super simple. And honestly, within these series, I've been trying to show you that you can dominate on both sides of the ball just running about five plays. On defense, our focus is we want to be able to run, um, we want to be able to have good run defense. So we want to have a run defense. We want to have a match defense. We want to have zone defense. We want to have a man defense. And we want to have pressure that we can send at any point. So we have the ability to do all five of those things on the defensive side of the ball. On the offensive side of the ball, what we want to do is we want to have a power play, which is the play flood. Um, as you can see right here, I'm going to run this play about 80% of the game. If, if, if it's a good game for me offensively, I will have ran flood probably seven out of seven to eight out of every 10 times that I call play. That's really the really the the, the notif notification that I know that I've done it right if I can do that. The counter play is a play that we're going to call probably about 10 to 15 percent of the time. And that is a play that um, basically looks exactly the same as your um, as your base play or as your power play but it goes a little bit of a different direction so you don't really it doesn't really like i said it doesn't look any different it just goes differently okay 
So they think you're running the power play when in reality you're running the counter play. And so it's actually really good defense there by that linebacker. I didn't think he'd be able to get back on that corner route there. So good de or that little uh, out route. So our counter play in bunch is Jets did. Um, it's the best cover three bomb in the entire game. So if they're running a lot of cover three, this is the play that we want to run. This is the play that we will run if they're running a lot of cover three. Cover three Mabel style of coverage is really good. It's also good for cover four um, if they're running some type of cover four style of defense, which they probably won't be running that, especially if they're trying to defend Flood. Flood is a defense or a play that is going to be defended by either cover two or cover three primarily. Um, so that's just something that you have to, you know, kind of know. Um, and then here we're able to hit that option on the back of the end zone for a nice little dot wide open touchdown. And we're on the board. This is huge. We've got a one possession advantage because now not only it, we, technically we really kind of have a two possession advantage because we get bought half and that's huge. It's absolutely huge. So that's one of the main reasons why I always advise people to go into their settings the first tip i could give you about madden 21 is to go into your settings and make sure that you are choosing to kick the ball off as your primary option as your primary selection you don't want to be receiving the ball first you want to be kicking the ball every time okay so anyways uh the, then we have a constraint three play a constraint three play is basically it's a play that is designed to take advantage of when they start to over over you know over pursue so when they start to move zone drops, when they start to blitz certain ways, when they start to use her on certain sides of the field, this is what a constraint theory play is designed to basically beat, okay? And so, you know, that's kind of what the smash return is. The beauty of this actually changed it. I was I was using um oh dag on it. He just broke a big run on us. I should have I should have ran to the run defense. Um, because his best his three best plays has been the three runs. But anyways, what I was getting at with the with the passing play is a constraint three play I actually recently just changed it and the reason i changed it is because um the play that i was running it was good it was a very good passing play the only problem was it looked different like literally a motion receiver it was actually the play mesh uh with the motion out corner route and while that is still good and i can still use that from time to time that's not that's not um a core a core of the scheme anymore because you have to motion some money. I don't want to have to do that. Again, I want to keep it super, super simple. And so the beauty of the smash return, and you see here like this guy, um, we'll talk about this in just a minute. The beauty of the smash return is you don't have to motion anybody, you just snap it. You just literally snap the ball and you go and you're good. And then we have a running play, uh, which for me is the halfback base. Um, and then the also, you know, I'll use this, you know, maybe once a game, if that, um, if I ever need it, I normally don't ever need it, but the end around from the bunch is actually really good. Not the, not, not the reverse, the end around play where it has a lead blocker. That's actually a good running play to run to the left side. If you're getting in that situation now, right here, we're actually going to shift our defense up a little bit and we're going to go with a little bit more run defense on that third one. The reason why you saw, I went to the run defense right there. The reason why I did that is because he's the only success he's had is running the ball. That has been his primary point of success. So if if it's a third and four situation, he's not going to pass. Now, right here, I think this is a crazy decision. Um, he's probably going to go to the 0-1 trap, and so that's why uh, we are blitzing everybody. And as you can see right here, we're going to be able to blow it up. I mean, we literally went right to the run defense. The run defense did its job. We get the ball back, and we're going to be up by one possession. So now this is where we just basically need to not screw it up, right? Again, most Madden games are lost, not won. Most Madden games are lost, not won. They're lost from a bad interception, and that's the beauty of keeping it simple. Whenever you keep it simple like this, you can kind of be okay with you see you start to see everything they're gonna do, and you start to get kind of a feel for how you're gonna re respond to that. So, if he's gonna start to run a lot of cover two, I'm always gonna put that hitch little hitch out hit, hitch right there. And the reason why the reason why I like to put that hitch there is because that phase never gonna beat a cover two. If he's going to run cover two, then we will go to something else, okay? Um, that, that There's no reason to leave the fade there. The fade is primarily there for every other defense other than cover two. Now, you can leave the fade there if you want, but in situations where you know they're running cover two, just just throw the hitch. Just throw the hitch, okay? And and it's a nice little change-up. Again, it's, not, it's one little adjustment. 
right? It's one little adjustment, um, but it can go a long way. It still, in my opinion, keeps the scheme simple. And obviously, if you don't feel comfortable changing it and you want to do it exactly like I'm suggesting, then you don't have to do that. You can just you know hit the option around on the left side because if they don't do their zone drops, they're screwed. You know, if they don't do five yard hook curls, they can't stop the hitch at all. Okay, they're not going to be able to stop that. That's the beauty of the flood play. The flood play forces you to have to adjust. A good power play will always force you to have to adjust. And if he does not adjust, if he does not go into his coaching adjustments and change his zone drops, or he does not, you know, max cover or whatever, or use or something, we're going to get him. I mean, we're going to get him consistently here. So, anyways, uh, it looks like to me he's running cover four to – he's actually doing an interesting little defense. He's running basically cover four um, to the short side, and he's running cover two to the wide side of the field. It's kind of his kind of his move right now. Um, but as you can see here, step up in the pocket. Uh, daggone it. That's actually just a little bit unfortunate. I didn't have to step all the way up in the pocket right there. And I actually just, I guess at the very last second, I stepped over the line, unfortunately. But it is what it is. Now, as far as like, again, you, you want to time your counterplay. So we know that his cover six, the cover four side is on the left side, typically the way he's running it. So we're just going to flip the play here. What that should do is it should open up the square receiver over the top if he's in quarters. And unfortunately, he wasn't. He's in, I think he's in some other D. But anyway, there you go. And I think he's literally just saying, I'm going to run cover two to the wide side field. That's what I'm going to do, which is actually not a bad strategy. I actually, actually do kind of agree with that in principle. So, uh, so far, flood, man. Uh, he hasn't adjusted to flood. We're going to keep running it. You know, he's he's manning some people up or getting some match principles to happen. That's the beauty of flood is the option route to the running back does a very good job against match coverage. The out route to the R1 receiver does a really good job against match coverage. One quick little two, uh, little tip here on flood is if I'm inside like the 15 yard line, I don't run the streak. Like I literally just won't run the streak. And right here, that's actually like threading the needle, but a really nice little dot over the middle. Um, he went pretty heavy pressure pretty heavy underneath coverage with that mike blitz three from the three through five wide and we were able to you know again this is what we talk about we talk about simplifying i've ran flood so many times i naturally look to the flat look to the hitch look to the out route look to the option route worked all the way to my fifth read and was able to hit it again it's an inch wide and a mile deep philosophy but i think it does work really really well so he's got about a minute 19 here in the second quarter. This is what I say, like, you know, Madden games are lost, not won. If I am, if he is strategic here, it is very likely that he should, if he, if he is going to stick with his strategy, he is going to need to run the ball. If he passes the ball here, this is where he can get himself into a lot of trouble. And he's actually going to, um, he's actually going to his, passing formation the bunch open so that's fine we're just going to stick with our little defense here and and we're going to give that up right but he's going to his passing formation so what that tells me is he need, he's going to start to press he's going to start to push down the field now i could stick with this cover four quarters defense another little thing that's actually really good again situationally because i know the situation i could go to a very um what i would say is like very safe uh, zone drop we're literally like we're putting and there's a little jet touch pass um like where we're putting our flats on 30 our curl flats on 15 yards our hook curls on maybe even 10 yards and just kind of cloud up the the zone space i could do that as well if i wanted to okay so that's just an uh, that's an option um right here he's gonna go to some five wide and this is the problem um Let's see here, and we didn't get we didn't get great adjustments there. So he might have us. I think he was going to throw an interception to us right there. That's going to bring him a fourth down situation. Now, if he, if he's this is a really bad decision to go for it. This is him basically saying like, if I don't get this, the game's over. Because what's going to happen is if he does not get this, um, the game is pretty for all intents and purposes is going to be over. And the re, and I'll explain why in just a moment here. Um, yep, got him little curl flat now the reason why the game is now over okay i get ball at halftime and not only do i get ball at halftime and this is where again game management is important at some degree even if you're dominating the game right have you ever dominated somebody and they've still had a chance to come back and get you 
this is where you close that out okay this is this is where you close it out now he's showing heavy heavy pressure now i have three timeouts okay now this right here i actually would really like to go to the play jets dig just because i know what he's going to do so we're going to go to play jets dig here because in his mind he's probably like well they're probably going to you know block the crib so he's blitzing everybody on this play so i'm just going to go to this quick little flat here get up get out of bounds now the reason why i did that is because I wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure that I was in field goal range, okay? So now that I know I'm in field goal range, I'm gonna run the ball every single play. Um, in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it so much so that I'm gonna come out in the play end around, just in case he gives me the look to go to that play, uh, and we'll show this, but basically it's either end around or base. So like right here, this is a good look to go to end around because there's nobody on the left side of the field to stop this play. Um, so as you see here, it's basically one on one, and I can just get up, cut up for a couple yards. Now the question is here, what does he do? I'm gonna let the clock tick, 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 tick. I don't need to score, okay, uh, a touchdown. I just need to score a field goal. If I score a field goal, the game's practically, for all practical purposes, the game is over. And the reason why the game is over is because I have a three possession lead with the ball. So as you see right here, we're gonna close it out. We're gonna call the timeout. We're gonna go to our, our special teams here and we're just gonna take our field goal. We got ourselves in very good field goal range here. This isn't a difficult field goal to make, uh, even though I'm probably one of the world's worst kickers. But as you see, we are able to you know, secure that field goal and secure the 17 point advantage. Now, this is a huge, huge, huge tip. Whenever you are receiving the ball, do not pick your play quick. You wanna wait until that little meter is all the way down to five seconds and make sure that they're not onside kicking. I speak from experience. If you just get mindless, they'll slip an onside kick in. It's really hard to audible to the onside kick recover this year and they're gonna get you. That's it's literally gonna, I'm telling you right now, it's gonna happen. So we're still playing on conservative here. So I don't think, well, I don't think it's conservative actually applies on the kickoff. So I'm just gonna go down. I've fumbled the ball so many times on kickoffs this year, it's insane. So as you can see here, we're on conservative. That way we, we won't fumble the ball. We're in a really good position. And he's having to press, he's having to push. He's having to you know get himself back in the game through blitzing. And of course, I almost let him right there with a bad read. But as you can see here, now we're in a position where we might want to start to consider to go to some of our other plays, right? He's gonna, his, his thing is like, I'm gonna run man coverage. That's going to be his move. So um, some adjustments that we can do, I mean, we can just run the play as is if we want to. Now, we also know that based off of where his user is standing, right, based off where his user is standing, if that linebacker on the left side blitzes, he can't get out there. He can't get out there. So as you see here, we're just going to get up, get a couple quick yards, and go. Another little tip that you can use for beating the blitz, if you need a quick hot read, is you can put your tight end on an out route. So you'll see right here, I'm gonna put the tight end on the out route. And if they're in man to man, that tight end is gonna beat it every single time. Wide open dot, easy read. So he's if he's gonna sit in man pressure the entire game, um, you know, we're gonna be in a pretty good position. So same situation right here, you see he's bringing the user down. This tells me, okay, I've got, you know, he's man coverage, man coverage across the board. And so you have some options. I mean, you could go to the play Jets dig. You you could go to a lot of things here, but we're just going to check it down. I just want to kind of see how he defends the base from this run or this defense. It doesn't seem super sound against the run. We almost got out of there with that. And we're going to kind of no huddle him a little bit here, get him a little bit riled up. And again, the best defense, in my personal opinion, for a bunch is a good man-to-man -man coverage scheme. Like it is actually difficult to beat man uh, with especially some of the plays and some of the concepts that I prefer to use out of bunch. So, you know, that's it's not a bad, it's not a bad strategy, but we're gonna go to our counter play at this point. Um, and it's really mainly just for this table route here. You see they're just able to hit it. Um, probably threw that a little bit late, but that's okay. And his, you could tell, I mean, his user is like, okay, I'm gonna go to the running back. If they do this, then I'm gonna do this. So, you know, now we're in a situation where he's got to set a decent little, little, a decent little spot here. And so again, remembering and understanding where is his user gonna go if that running back jets to the flat, the user is gonna go to the left, okay? So what I wanna to try to do here is I wanna to try to create enough time 
And so we're going to use a little bit of an adjustment here where we have that quick out on the left side here. So he's going, we know he's going to run that way. And actually when dropped into some coverage and we're able to hit him with an easy dot. Legal contact on my opponent, we're going to decline that. Uh, and we're just going to kind of keep with the yards that we were able to gain. But it's, this, this double A-gap forces you to have to respect the pressure. It definitely does. But the problem is the way that he's kind of choosing to go about running it, he's leaving himself very vulnerable to that right there. As you see the base right up the, right up the gut, and we are going to be able to uh, go ahead and close this game out. Very dominant performance. Thanks for watching. I hope you picked up on a couple of things. If you want to get my exact offense and defense that I ran in this video, I'm going to link both of those down in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys later.